All right, guys, Sunday the 23rd of February, and it's been a while since I've been in the garage just picking up where we left off. To be honest with you, I've been a little bit lazy. I uh, have been actually home, or at least uh, been available to come out in the garage at nighttime, but it's been too cold out in the garage, and it's just difficult to do body work when it's cold, and I can't have the heater running 100% of the time, so my time is sort of limited to, uh, to weekends <clears throat> when I can have the heater running over consecutive days. So anyway, it's Sunday, and uh, we're back out here just uh, picking up where we left off. So I'm going to do a little sanding to clean uh, up the areas where I just uh, obviously looks like I just, uh, before I left, I put a uh, quick coat of filler on. So we're going to sand that down, see where we're at, and then we will continue on finding the highs and the lows in this uh, rear section here and getting this to look a little bit better. Making progress, but extremely slow progress, but progress nonetheless. Anyway, we'll keep going on. All right, guys, we have the uh, driver's side somewhere pretty close to where I want to get it. And... Uh, it's looking good, or looking much better than it was. So we're going to move on to the uh, passenger side, and we're going to start working on the front part here, where we've done a lot of work on this area here. Some of it we've done, some of it the previous owner's done. Anything that looks crappy, the previous owner did. Anything that looks good, we did. Uh, we did actually raise this. Uh, we did a cut here and raised this section up in order to make the Surrey top fit a little bit better. Uh, we did not do this work down here, and in particular here, it's uh, pretty rough. There's quite a, uh, quite a difference in uh, level between this panel and this panel. So we're going to use a little filler to fill that up and square this area off and make this look a little bit better. So we'll work on this area back to about here, back to about here, and uh, we'll see if we can make that look a little bit better. Then we'll concentrate uh, kind of on the rear of the fender and that round uh, edge. That's it for now. We'll come back. All right, guys, it's now Monday, and uh, we're back out uh, working on the car. And I thought I'd just uh, give you a quick uh, look at where we're at. So I've been working on this area uh, along the rear shelf in particular, um, because I had quite a discrepancy between this side and the uh, passenger side. When I'm looking at from here to here, basically the space, you can see the light coming from under the ruler. Well, I, I think this side is more accurate than the other side since I've got the, the ruler basically resting on bare metal here on the bare metal shelf. And it's resting on the edge of the fender flange. So that's a pretty good, indi good indication of what I've got as far as a gap is concerned, as far as the profile is concerned on this side. And it was finding that on the we walk around to the uh, passenger side at a significantly different profile at a huge amount of gap underneath the same measurement from this side. So I'm going to go around the back of it from this side, switch hands here on the camera. So I've been building up this area back in here to reflect the same amount. So it's getting closer, but uh, I put quite a bit of fill in this area just to uh, shrink that profile that sort of curvature that's in there that goes like this to make it a little flatter or to make it match at least that side I'm not sure which is actually correct but I'm trying to get the uh, the sides to match but anyway this is definitely looking better along here so we definitely need to work that back in here a little bit more get a little bit more filler in here and then sort of work the profile back where it drops off to the rear of the car so that's where we're at so we're just doing uh, little steps to get that done. I think what I'm going to do uh, shortly after we get this area figured out is I'm going to come back and I'm going to start working on uh, the taillight sections. I remember when I uh, fitted the, uh, the new taillights they were a little tight on the one side. I can't remember whether it was the passenger or the driver's side that they were tight. So I might need to rework the uh, taillight pockets a little bit before I get too crazy uh, with the filler work because obviously if I need to do some welding that's going to uh, disrupt the work that I've been doing or have done already. So I don't want to get too far into it without retesting those uh, rear tail lights. I finally got the second one in that I was waiting for. I had one that was uh, delivered and one that was back ordered. Well, the back ordered one finally showed up. So we'll play around with that one and see uh, how the fit is on both sides and to make sure we're good there before we go on. So that's it. That's really what I'm doing. Not a lot to video, uh, just a lot of uh, Bondo applications and sanding uh, along the way. That's pretty much about what I've been doing for the last uh, few weeks on this car. Nothing really too exciting. So 
that's why the uh, videos are few and far between. I am not a fast bodywork uh, guy by any means. I probably put more bondo on and take more bondo off than uh, than probably waste more than anything else. So anyway, that's it for now. That's the uh, the update, and we'll continue on working in the section until I get it. Uh, looking a little closer to what the profile looks over there. Alright guys, just looking to uh, break the sanding up a little bit and uh, looking for some other uh, project to do to move the uh, project forward. Either that I can just sit here and stare at the car for a little longer, but that doesn't seem to be getting much done. Anyway, uh, dragged out the uh, inner bonnet structure uh, that I removed uh, probably a few months ago now. And I was just looking at the repairs that I need to make here on the flanges where I drilled out the spot welds holding it on. So we've got to make those repairs here and on the other side and here on the nose. Obviously this needs to be sandblasted would probably be the best course of action for this to get into all the uh, the nooks and crannies before I get this uh, epoxy primed and then refastened to the inside of the bonnet. So that's, that's a project that's got to be done. Um, I was thinking about uh, this might be a little fun little project as to uh, drill the holes for the uh, side marker lights uh, like the TR250s have and the uh, TR4As had them later actually. This is an original TR250 fender. Uh, this is a TR4 fender so I've got to actually move the not only the side marker uh, light uh, holes but I have to also drill holes for the uh, strip pieces, the, uh, the fender beading I guess you can call it. Uh, so they take these uh, rivets here, so I've got to drill the holes along the fender for that beading piece as well. So that might be a fun little project to do. I don't think it'll be too difficult. I've got a good reference line here on this first fastener, which just basically ends at the bottom of the body line here. You're probably not going to be able to see it. So that would probably be the easiest one to, uh, to find, and then we could probably measure off to find the other ones. Um, so maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll tackle this project next. All right, guys. I uh, hope they're in the right spot. I measured them a few times, so hopefully they're going to be okay. So next job is to uh, drill those holes for those rivets to hold on the molding uh, strips. So we'll go ahead and we'll mark those out, and we'll go ahead and drill it. All right, fairly uh, drama-free and anticlimactic. Basically, spacing's about six and three quarter inches apart. They're a half an inch up from the uh, body molding all the way along. And uh, there's seven holes for rivets. So that's all done. That's all done. Still need to do the uh, locating areas for the rear wing marker lights, which uh, were not on the, again, TR4 fenders. So the TR250s had actually a badge back here and a marker light that I need to uh, actually make the drillings for. I've got to pull those lights out at some point. I have brand new ones of those. And they're a little different than the factory fitment ones. So we'll definitely get the new ones out to do the, uh, the drillings for those because I think they'll be different from the factory. So that is done. Another job crossed off the list. So we'll figure out something else to do. I think we're gonna probably call the night though and uh, get ready for work tomorrow. So that's it for tonight. We'll get out here when we can. Thanks for All watching. Right, guys, Thursday, February the 27th, and we've got a bit of a snow day outside. We're fortunate this year that uh, when we've got snow, it's uh, we've had some warmer days following, so we haven't had a lot of snow staying on the ground this year. And uh, the snow has melted away, and then we've got another batch of snow. We've just got another batch of snow. This one's pretty significant. It's uh, pretty deep out here today. This was completely bare ground uh, two days ago and this started yesterday morning and into last night and got a pretty good uh, pretty good snowfall going on. It's pretty pretty deep for one snowfall that's for sure. You sort of see the trucks pretty well covered. Anyway I'm gonna have a bit of fun shoveling today. And of course, we've been plowed in at the end of the driveway. So, not looking forward to that. So we're out here today. It's a snow day. I didn't even attempt to even try to get to work today. All the buses were canceled up here, so I figured I'd stay home and work from home. Anyway, make our way back to the garage.
and uh, we'll break out the shovels. That's it for now. Oh. Alright guys, Thursday night and a little too cold to uh, do any body work in the garage tonight. It's only about uh, 5 degrees Celsius out here. It's about uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, we're just going to do a little clean up on this fender. We'll remove some of this remaining red paint. Eventually this is going to have to get into black epoxy primer so we may as well clean it up the best we can. So we're just looking for some little odd jobs to do and this one seems handy so uh, we're just going to go ahead and do that. Nothing too exciting. Just thought I'd pick up the camera and let you know that I was out here tonight. Alright guys, spent the last hour or so out here on the rear uh, fender. Uh, just cleaning it up of all uh, remaining uh, red paint. I'm always surprised at uh, how well the uh, original Triumph factory paint sticks to a panel. Anyway, it's all clean on the exterior. The interior still has some red, but I don't think we're going to take that all the way down. Anyway, that's going to be uh, undercoated uh, with um, Raptor liner, so we're not going to worry too much about that. So that's looking pretty good. It's at 180 grit at the moment. Uh, I wish I could get it into black epoxy, but that's not going to happen. It's too darn cold out. So that'll have to wait. Uh, in the meantime, I think I had mentioned on the previous little video snippet that uh, we were thinking about working on this uh, interior bonnet structure and we're going to glass bead blast that but I'm thinking that uh, I might want to try to give it a bit of a head start and give it a bit of a wire brush and maybe a little angle grind before we get to the bead blasting uh, stage just to make things a little bit easier and a little quicker so I think that's what we'll do next um, and I think what I'm going to do is probably cover the car up uh, just with some plastic uh, because when I start grinding on that rust it's just going to go everywhere and uh, that rust on this bare metal will uh, actually surface rust it a little quicker so I think that's what we'll do is we'll cover this up just to be uh, a little more careful with this than usual. That's it for now. We'll get out here, uh, not sure when, but uh, like I said, the next thing will be that inner bonnet, bonnet structure.